Shalom, he bros and she brews. This is Oldfield Disciple. We're going to eat some daily bread today. Um, we will be in Exodus 6, Luke 9, I believe, and Psalm 54, Proverbs 22. So, get those chapters ready, um, and we will begin our daily bread. I hope everybody had a blessed Shabbat, blessed weekend. Um, Today's Monday, my last day before I go on days off again, and um, we're going back to the river, me and the family, and we're going to enjoy some days down the river, so hopefully I'll get some daily bread done for y'all um, down there on the riverbank, uh, that nice peaceful place we go, so let's let's get started here, let's get our daily bread, I hope this will bless you, encourage you, and even frustrate you, go look this up for yourself, I'll just take my word for it. <coughs> Shemot, chapter 6, Exodus, chapter 6, verse 1. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Now see what I do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he is going to let them go, and with a strong hand he is going to drive them out of his land. And Elohim spoke to Moshe and said to him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared to Abraham, to Yitzhak, Yaakov, as El Shaddai, and by my name Yahweh, was I not known to them? And I, I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings in which they have sojourned. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Mitrites are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Okay, if you're new to the channel, Moshe is Moses. Yahweh is God. Uh, Mitrite is the Egyptians. I believe that covers it. Elohim is Lord. Yeshua is Jesus. Verse 6. Say therefore to the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I shall bring you out from under the burdens of the Mitrites, and shall deliver you from their enslaving. And I shall redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And shall take you as my people, and I shall be your Elohim, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who is bringing you out from under the burdens of the Mitrites. And I shall bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, to Yisak, to Jacob, and to give it to you as an inheritance. I am Yahweh. And Moshe spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not listen to Moshe because of the shortness of spirit and from hard slavery. Now remember when... when uh, Moses first went to Pharaoh and asked to let his people go. Pharaoh got mad and uh, told his people, don't even bring them straw. Let them go get their own straw, but I still want the same production rate. And so the, the, is, uh, the Israelites feel kind of jacked here. You know, it's like, hey, Moses, you know, I appreciate what you're doing here, but uh, you're making life hard on us. So this is where Moses is at. Verse 10, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Go in, speak to Pharaoh, king of Misraim, to let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moshe spoke before Yahweh, saying, The children of Israel have not listened to me, and why would Pharaoh listen to me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, and gave them command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Misraim. To bring the children out of Israel, out of the land of Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is Egypt. These are the heads of their fathers. These are the heads of their fathers' houses. The son of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. Hanok, and Pelu, Hetron, and Carmi. These are the clans of Reuben. And the sons of Shimeon, Yemuel, and Yaman, Ohad, Yakin, Soar, Shaul, the son of the Canaanite woman. These are the clans of Shimon. These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations, Gershon, Kehoth, and Merai, and the years of the life of Levi were 137. And the sons of Gershon, Lebni, and Shimni, according to their clans, and the sons of Kehoth, Amram, Yitchar, Hebron, Uziel, and the years of the life of Kehath were 133.
and the sons of Mirai, Mahali, and Mushi. These are the clans of Levi according to their generations. Now remember, we know that, you know, reading through the, the lineage sometimes is, is dull and boring, but it is very key to knowing that, um, understanding the timeline, not only, but that, that God's word is sovereign. Um, and so it is important to, to understand um, this lineage, this the, the clans. And although it may be boring sometimes, it does pay off whenever you will diligently speak out their names and read their names. Because as you go on through scriptures, some of these names are going to pop back up. And for historical purposes. And, and you won't be completely in the dark with it. Verse 20, and Amram took for himself Jochebed, his father's sister, as wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moshe. And the years of the life of Amram were 137. And the sons of Yitzhar, Korah, and Nepheg, Zikri, the sons of Uziel, Mishael, and Elasaphan, and Sithri. Aaron took to himself Elisheba, daughter of Amenadab, sister of Nehoshon, as wife, and she bore him Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, and the sons of Korah, Asher, Elkanah, Abiasaph, and these are the clans of the Korites. And Eleazar, Aaron's son, took for himself one of the daughters of Putiel as wife, and she bore him Penehas. These are the heads of the fathers of the Levites according to their clans. This is Aaron and Moshe. To whom Yahweh said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Mitzrayim, according to their divisions. <coughs> they, were, they were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, to bring out the children of Israel from Mitzrayim. This is Moshe and Aaron. It came to be on the day when Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the land of Mitzrayim, that Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, I am Yahweh. Speak to Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, all that I say to you. And Moshe said before Yahweh, See, I am uncircumcised lips, then why would Pharaoh listen to me? Pretty hard assignment that he's given Moses. Uh, sometimes he gives us these assignments as well, and we're like, Man, I don't know, Lord. I don't know if I can do it. You know, I mean, kind of like where I'm at spiritually, physically, emotionally, and physically, um, bringing up this new church, this new assembly, uh, coming out of her, my people, coming out of the religion, the religiosity of uh, what is, um, oh, how do I want to say it, the popular view of religion, and I I'm bringing us back to the scriptures, back to the Torah, and it's quite um, quite burdensome at times, because as I speak, the people are looking at me like, you know, like a bird just pooped on my head, Some, you know, and they, they, see, they hear some of these truths that I'm speaking out, and they're just like, I don't know, man, that ain't what I've been hearing all my life, but they are becoming more receptive. I am getting a core group of of like-minded believers and and it's only through the holy spirit and yahweh that is that is guiding this but it can be quite um, daunting uh, to do this you know um, and so just you know not not even on near the scale that moses is dealing with here of course and don't hear me wrong i'm not i'm not matching myself with anything moses but um when we, we are given tasks, we are given things to do from the Lord, sometimes it can be overwhelming at times. And if we don't stay diligent in the Lord, uh, it, it will roll us up. Let's cruise to Luke, Luke uh, chapter 9. And having called his twelve taught ones together, he gave them power and authority over all demons and to heal diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the reign of Elohim and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take no matter at all for the journey, neither staffs nor bag, nor bread nor silver, neither have two undergarments. And whatever house you enter, stay there, 
and go out from there. Let that be your base camp. And as for those who do not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the dust from your feet as a witness against them. Okay, we've talked about this here recently. I love that there's pastors that go out in the streets and preach the gospel. I love that. But if you're somewhere where your people are not receiving you and, and it's causing riots, kick the dust off your feet and move on. I get it you have first and second and third and fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth amendment rights. Um, I, I get that, that you have a constitutional right to do so. But at the end of the day, is it glorifying God by you standing there and yelling at a people that have closed their ears off to you? I say no. Verse 6, and going out, they went through the villages bringing the good news and healing everywhere. And Herodias, the district ruler, heard of all that was being done by him and was perplexed because it was said by some that Johanan had been raised from the dead and some that Eliehu had appeared and by others that one of the old prophets had risen up. And Herodias said, Johanan I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such reports? And he was seeking to see him. He's looking for Jesus. He wants to meet with Jesus. And the emissaries, or the apostles, when they had returned, related to him all that they had done. And he took them, and they were they withdrew them by themselves to a city called Bethsaida. <clears throat> and when the crowds knew it, they followed him. And having received them, he was speaking to them about the reign of Elohim, and healed those who had need of healing. And as the day began to decline, the twelve came and said to him, Send the crowd away that going into the surrounding villages and country, they might lodge and get food, because here we are in a lonely place. But he said to them, you give them, you give them to eat, and they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fishes, unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men, and he said to his taught ones, Make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so, and made them all sit down. 5,000 men equates to about 10 to 12,000 people total, because you don't number the women or the children. And taking the loaves and the two fishes, having looked up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and he gave them the taught ones to set before the crowd. So they all ate and were satisfied, and twelve baskets of broken pieces were picked up by them. And it came to be, as he was alone praying, the taught ones were with him. And he asked them, saying, Who do you, the crowd say that I am? And they answered and said, Johanan the Immerser, but others, Eliehu, that's Elijah. And others say that one of the old prophets has risen up. And he said to them, And you, who do you say I am? And Kepha, or Peter, answered and said, the Messiah of Elohim. And strictly warning them, he commanded them to say this to no one. Interesting study to go seek that out. Saying the son of man, or son of Adam, has to suffer much and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and to be killed and be raised the third day. Now he's telling them this, but it's kind of going in one ear and right out the other. Because come the day that Jesus is arrested, Judas betrays him to get him arrested. Peter denies him. Thomas denies him. And both of those do not deny him on the basis of we're scared of the people. They deny him because Jesus did not fulfill their idea of what Jesus was going to come do. And so therefore they got hurt. And most of the time when we men get hurt, we lash out in anger in different ways. Verse 23, and he said to them all, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his stake daily, and follow me. See, they still, that, ha that does not resonate to them. To us, that resonates today because we know that Jesus, Messiah, hung on that cross, hung on that stake, that cursed tree for you and I. So that, that resonates with us. This, this surely does not resonate with them. They don't, they don't get it. You know, what do you mean pick up our stake? They don't they don't see the full picture. But Jesus is telling them beforehand. 
Verse 24, for whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he shall save it. For what is it a man profit if he gain the whole world and himself is destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me in my words, of him the son of Adam shall be ashamed when he comes to <clears throat> when he comes in his glory and his honor and his father and in his fathers and holy messengers. But truly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death at all till they see the reign of Elohim. It came to be about eight days after these words, taking with him Kepha, Johanna, and Jacob, he went up to the mountain to pray. It came to be as he prayed, the appearance of his face changed and his garments dazzling white. And see, two men were talking with him, who were Moshe and Eliehu, Moses and Elijah, who having appeared in esteem, spoke of his death, which he was about to complete at Yerushalayim. But Kepha and those who were with him, heavy with sleep, and having awakened, they saw his glory and honor in the two men standing with him. It came to be as they were parting from him, Kepha said to Yeshua, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three booths, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eliehu, not knowing what he said. And as he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid, and they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, the beloved. Hear him. And when the voice had spoken, Yeshua was found alone, and they were silent, reported to no one in those days any of what they had seen. They're trying to figure out what in the world just happened. And it came to be on the next day when they came down from the mountain that a large crowd met him. And see, a man from the crowd cried out, saying, Teacher, I beg you, look, my son, for he is my only child. And see, a spirit sees him, and he suddenly cries out and convulses him with foaming and, and scarcely leaves him, bruising him. And I begged your taught ones to cast it out, but they were unable. Yeshua answered and said, Oh, generation unbelieving and perverse, how long shall I be with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. And as he was still coming, the demon threw him down in convulsions, and Yeshua rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of Elohim. And while all were marveling at all that Yeshua did, he said to his taught ones, Lay up in your ears these words. For the son of Adam is about to be delivered to the hands of men. But they did not understand the saying, and it was veiled from them so that they did not receive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this. And reasoning arose among them who might be greater of them. <clears throat> and Yeshua, having seen the reasoning of their heart, took a little child and placed him on his side. He said, whoever receives this little child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you shall be great. And Johanan answered, said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him, because he does not follow with us. Yeshua said to him, Do not forbade him, for he who is not against us is for us. It came to be when the days of, of his taking up were being completed, even he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him, and they went and entered to a village of Shomiron to prepare for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And his taught ones, Jacob and Yohanan, seeing it, said, Master, do you wish us to command fire to come down from heaven and destroy them, as Eliehu Eli Eli did? Hey, Master, I've been here. It's like, man, I'm tired of these people. Let me just call down fire, we'll burn them up. But having turned, he rebuked them and said, Do you not know what spirit you are? Do you not know who you're following, in other words? Have you not seen what I'm doing? I'm bringing life, not death. For the Son of Man, Son of Adam, did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village. And it came to be, as they journeyed on the way, that someone said to him, Master, I shall follow you wherever you go. Yeshua said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the heaven have nests, 
But the son of Adam, nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, follow me. But he said, Master, let me go first and bury my father. And Yeshua said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and announce the reign of Elohim. 